Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand low power design through voltage scaling. Let's quickly recap what we have already seen. We know that the dynamic power dissipation is a summation of switching power and the short circuit power. Here I have called the switching power as dynamic power and written the equation which is nothing but alpha CL VDD square into frequency. Alpha is the switching activity factor and CL is the load capacitance. In the previous clip we saw that when my VDD which needs to be technically scaled down because dynamic power dissipation is directly proportional to the square of VDD. If we try to reduce VDD or the supply voltage, my dynamic power will reduce. But we saw that at that point of time, because of the equation which is present on the screen, my delay would increase because delay and VDD are inversely proportional. And that happens, my performance of the circuit would be degraded. However, I want the dynamic power to reduce, but I don't want my circuit to degrade in terms of its performance. So for that, we studied three different techniques. So as I mentioned, we need to reduce our VDD without the performance being degraded. So with that, we need to study three different techniques as a part of supply voltage scaling. And the three techniques are static voltage scaling, multi-level voltage scaling, and dynamic frequency and voltage scaling. Let's understand a bit of all three of them. Let's start with static voltage scaling. In static voltage scaling, what we do is we divide our entire circuit. Suppose this was my entire circuit, right? We divide our entire circuit into different voltage domains. Say this was, I'm dividing my circuit. Initially, this was my entire circuit. Now I'm dividing into different, different voltage domains. So some part of the circuit I'll put in voltage domain A, some part of the circuit I'll put in voltage domain B, some I'll put in C, some I'll put in D, and so on and so forth. So the entire circuit is divided into different voltage domains. Suppose these are the four different voltage domains. Let's say this is operating at 1.6 volts because our VDD I'm presuming it to be 1.8. So 1.6 could be this one. This guy could be operating on 1.3 volts. This can be operating on 1.1 volt. This can be operating on 0.9 volts, so on and so forth. So what we are doing is the entire circuit, as I mentioned, is divided into different voltage domains. And these are the following voltage domains. This voltage domains, how did I come up to this as 1.6, 1.3, 1.1 1 .1, and 0.9 is we have identified this voltage domain such that my circuit will function correctly. My performance will not be degraded, but at the same time, my dynamic power will also be reduced. So all the blocks which are present in A will be operated at 1.6. All the blocks which are present in B will operate at 1.3, so on and so forth for C and D as well. And this voltages are fixed at the time of the design so that the performance is not degraded. So what we need to understand here is only one thing that all this voltage domains will operate on one fixed voltage or one static voltage. And that's the reason this is called a static voltage scaling. We'll go and understand the details of this shortly. But for the timing, this is what we need to understand. To extend this, we have another concept which is called as multiple voltage scaling in which very similar to static voltage scaling, it's just an extension all the voltage domains which are present, right, can switch or can have more than one fixed voltage and it can switch between those voltages. For example, say for the time being, A had a fixed voltage 1.6. Now it can have 1.3 also and it can have 1.1 also. This guy, the B block can have 1.3, 0.9, 1.6 or something like that. Basically, what we are trying to do is here in this case, my supply voltage, this was my supply voltage, can be switched between two or more fixed voltages. So one of this could be 1.6, other one could be 1.3, so on and so forth. And at different instants of time, the different blocks of the circuits. Let's zoom into A. This is my A. In static voltage scaling, it only had a fixed voltage 1.6 and all the blocks were operating at 1.6. In multiple voltage scaling, A would have 1.6 and say 1.3 volts. This are different blocks in A, I suppose. So some point of time, some blocks of A can operate at 1.6. At other instance of time, some blocks of A can operate at 1.3 and so on and so forth. So at different instances, the different blocks of the circuit are given different supply voltages. And this is nothing but your multi-level voltage scaling. Now let's quickly go ahead and see dynamic voltage frequency scaling, DVFS. So dynamic voltage frequency scaling is an extension of multi-level voltage scaling. What happens in multi-level voltage scaling is you can apply in static voltage scaling. You had only one fixed voltage, which was being applied in multi-level voltage scaling. You had two or three different voltages of power supply in dynamic voltage scaling. You can have more than 
two or three or in simple words you can have large number of voltage levels which are dynamically applied now let's understand technically if you have a processor it will have to perform some function let's call that as a workload which it has to do so what we are going to do is depending on the process or depending on the workload which will be monitored for this processor we will keep on changing our frequency and voltage so when the workload is less I will see if I can reduce my voltage and frequency if the workload is more I can decide whether I want to increase or decrease my voltage and frequency in simple words let's understand here is we know that if I have a supply voltage say Vx so when I have a supply voltage Vx I would have some value set of delay which is tau and I'll have some frequency of my circuit suppose I reduce my Vx then I know that because I'm reducing my supply voltage my delay would increase that means my frequency would reduce so technically what we are trying to do is we are trying to scale our voltage and frequency both at the same time depending on what amount of work my circuit under consideration in this case a processor has to undergo or the workload which it has to take into consideration so in this particular case what we are trying to do is we are trying to scale our voltage and frequency both at the same time and we already know that dynamic power or the switching power is proportional directly to VDD square into frequency so when we scale both of this at the same time we'll be able to reduce considerably our dynamic power so how do we do all of this let's see it in a bit more details in the next clip I hope you have followed this stay tuned and thank you very much